Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do the second half of the second trimester recap. I broke it down into two parts because I don't know about you guys that have had babies, but the second trimester seemed to last forever. And I'm not complaining because I experienced one of those honeymoon second trimesters where a lot of people say that it's like bliss and you're in a great mood and you get your baby bump so you don't feel like you just look like you're gaining weight. All of the sickness or a lot of it of the first trimester is behind you. The spicy, fun, whew, third trimester stuff that started for me a little bit early is not there yet. So it's been fun, it's been long. I'm so glad I broke it up because I have so many details for you guys. I broke it down week by week so you know exactly what happens around when. And I'm glad I did because two of my sisters are pregnant and they're both about 10 weeks behind me. They're about 19 weeks right now. I'm 29, almost 30 weeks. So my one sister's like, did you feel this around this time? And I look at my notes and I'm like, yep, absolutely. You're fine. Nothing's wrong, which has been super helpful for them, but also extremely helpful for me because I know that this will help you. That was a lot. So before we get started, I just want to show you these gorgeous flowers these forever roses that I was gifted by the company Rose Forever. They are just to die for. They are out here right now on my coffee table because we have not finished the nursery yet. I have Adam working. We're actually gonna work on it some more tonight. We started it over the weekend. He's doing something really funky for me on one wall. He has to do that for me and he has to build the crib for me. And then I could do everything else. But my color scheme in there is black, white, and gray pretty much with dark wood so far and pops of yellow. So these are just gonna be so perfect if I can get Adam to let me take them off the coffee table because he loves them here. I'm gonna quickly tell you a little bit about Rose Forever, how you can get $15 off using the coupon code below and the link below. Then we'll get back to the video. So Rose Forever is a New York based company they launched in 2019. They specialize in designing luxurious flower bouquets with hand-picked exquisite roses that last for a year. They only use natural oils to preserve the roses. Yay for all of us holistic natural freaks. <laughs> the bouquets are handcrafted by professional rose artisans. Their roses come in round and square shaped velvet boxes in three different sizes, nine, 16, or 36 roses per box. So they're perfect whether you want a chic style Parisian looking decor house, or even if you want to use them for a special event as a gift. They create roses in a diverse palette of shades and they don't stop at just the standard rose colors. They also source darker ones like black and gray and really special shades like gold and silver. When they make those special colors, they're created through the natural process of pigmentation and they keep those rich, intense shades. Beautiful. So here's a link and a thank you code for anybody that's watching this video. You have 30 days from the day that I post this video to get $15 off the order at checkout. It is site-wide and there are no conditions. The link will be listed in the description box below and the coupon code, again, for $15 off is Row and Adam and is the ampersand 15. I'll put that on the screen just so you know that if you guys get them, let me know what you think. I'd love if you tag me on Instagram and photos. Enjoy. I love you guys and back to the video. I had a doctor's appointment today and she told me to try to eat more or yogurt, Greek yogurt specifically, because I might have an infection, like a bacterial infection that's extremely common during pregnancy. I think she said like 90% of women will get one at some point during their pregnancy. So it made me crave those soft serve frozen yogurt bowls. But I texted my sisters, the three of us are on a group chat, and I was like, am I allowed to have these? I've seen mixed reviews. And my one sister used to own one of those handles, the frozen yogurt self serve, you know what I'm talking about? Places, and she's like, honestly, if they say no, it's probably because of the bacteria, if they don't clean the machines right, because you don't even want to know what happens in there. And I'm like, okay, not going. So I went to Walmart instead and I got myself some Greek yogurt bars. So it's going to be like that today. We're going to eat and we are going to chit chat. I just couldn't help it. I couldn't wait. And it's like 90 degrees. <laughs> so it'll melt if I wait. I guess we'll add the hunger and the need for more calcium and the need for more calories in the third trimester video. In the third trimester in the third trimester video. Does that make sense? Okay, shit, just, just go. I'll link below what this is. This is really good. Before we get started, number two, because you know, if this video isn't gonna be long enough, 
this is a disclaimer that I get very detailed in these. My first half of the second trimester <laughs> recap video is about 30 minutes. My first trimester recap video I think is about 30 minutes, which is on the longer side. This one will probably be long, but I'm telling you it's chock full of information because I got real detailed in no. these. At 19 weeks, everything started to feel like a chore. We had to book plane tickets to go to New Jersey. I just avoided it for so long. I mean, you're sitting at a laptop. It's not strenuous, but everything just felt strenuous. Checking emails, responding to emails, even responding to texts and to phone calls. I would just let them sit because everything just felt like so much. Now, disclaimer, I found out later that I was extremely anemic, so it could be that, and a lot of that passed, but that's how I felt around that time. Also, it started to get hard to bend down at that point, and I know that's kind of early, I didn't have a huge belly, but I went to go put peppers, we have a produce drawer at the bottom of our refrigerator, and I was standing up and kind of throwing them in because the round ligament pain gets real, and it's just you're not used to having a little bit, even though it's not big at that point, you think it's big, you're not used to having that belly and your center of gravity changing. It's just a weird, not even pain, but it just is a weird feeling. So I remember I was throwing them in the drawer, and Adam was like, what are you doing? You're, you're gonna ruin the peppers. So this is kind of a two in one. I couldn't bend down, it hurt, it was hard to tie my shoes, but also I remember him doing that and normally, I don't care, but I remember that day for some reason, I was so hormonal that I wanted to sob. I got so my feelings, I felt so sensitive, I felt like he was yelling at me. He wasn't, he was like, why are you throwing peppers in the bottom drawer? You're gonna bruise them and ruin them. He was not saying it in any way derogatory. It was just me, I was in my feelings, it was hormones. Other than that, I really did not have any mood swings. I did not have any fights with Adam. Really nothing irritated me. Like it did in the first trimester. In fact, a little bit of the opposite. I felt myself around people who were frustrated and I would try to calm everything down really quickly. The other thing is my personality was so playful. Everything was fun, everything was a joke, which was great, but some of it, like it was really hard to have serious conversations because I was just in such a playful mood all the time, very distracted. Now that that has passed, I'm in my third trimester and I have a little bit more of my normal personality back. It just seems like it was like not me. Like I remember a couple times Adam and I having a conversation and I was just like acting like a kid. I remember his face, he didn't say anything, but his face was kind of like, are you okay? <laughs> I don't know. When that started, I don't remember. I'm just talking through as I remember things. Between 18 and 19 weeks, I had a really weird bruised feeling right here in my belly, one part of my belly. I never hit it or anything. It didn't look bruised or anything like that. I had heard a few times from different people that they felt the same way. It's probably just things stretching and pulling, but I hated when my belly touched anything. I still don't like when my belly touches too many things, like leaning over the sink when you're brushing your teeth or if I'm washing dishes and my belly touches the sink, I don't like that feeling at all. I don't know if it's, I'm a first time mom and it's in my head, but I just don't like things touching my belly. I mean, I like if Adam puts his hand on my belly and feels for the baby's kicks, that's different, but I don't like leaning into things with my belly. I just feel like it's a weird bruised pain. That bruised feeling in that one certain spot did go away after, maybe a week or two, but I still at this point don't like leaning on things. So if you feel that bruised feeling in your belly, know that it's normal. It's just your ligaments stretching and pulling and this ice cream cone is dripping. Tell me what about this is an ice cream cone. At 19 weeks, I felt my first hard, distinguishable kicks. Up until then, it felt just like gas bubbles. I didn't really know if it was a baby or if it was gas or if it was just, my stomach was graveling, it was hungry, whatnot. My baby is really active at night. A lot of people's babies are because during the day when you're walking and moving around, the motion of your body is actually rocking the baby to sleep. So usually you'll feel the baby a lot in the car or at night because you're sitting still. Nowadays, when he's really active, he is partying in there like a rock star all night long. But this one night, the first night at 19 weeks, when I felt it, I got up, I went to the bathroom, I laid back down on my left side because a lot of people say when you lay on your left side and you're still is when you really be able to feel the baby kick and I felt a couple of hard ones. In fact, one made me jump. I loved every second of it. To explain what the kicks feel like, at first it feels like gas bubbles and there's no gas attached so 
you're like, all right, is that, is that not? Then it kind of feels like flicks inside of your belly. I mean, and now they're so distinguishable. They make me jump sometimes, not because they necessarily hurt. They're hard and you never know when to expect them. So it's more because it's shocking versus painful. I also have not had any major kicks to the ribs yet. There was one time early on, probably around 19 or 20 weeks, maybe like, yeah, probably 20 weeks, where he would kick down like by where I think my ovary was and that would hurt because it would send kind of a nerve pain. My baby with his monstrous feet, I'm shocked. I'm not getting broken ribs, but you know, we're still early enough that maybe that's coming and I just jinxed myself. Mm. Around 19 and a half weeks, I noticed that I started to get strange anxiety. I'm normally an anxious person, but this was weird anxiety kind of borderline paranoia. Thankfully it went away. I know it's just hormones. The way that I kind of can envision the hormones in an analogy way, I kind of feel like it's like a plane going up and then descending for landing. So when your hormones increase for some reason, there are certain weeks that they increase and then they even out and then they increase a little more. You know, it's like you're going up a thousand feet and then you're flying and then you're going up a thousand feet above a cloud or a storm. You know what I mean? So I think this is just one of those times and the way that I Sometimes my hormones affect me, even PMS before I was pregnant would be with anxiety and sometimes even slight paranoia. So I remember the first time this happened to me, I was going for a really long walk and there is a bike trail off of the highway. So there's the highway, there's all fencing around it and this is a separate bike path off of this highway. Adam and I have walked it before, he runs it, I've ran it before. But this one day I remember just being extremely paranoid like somebody was gonna attack me or jump me or whatnot on this bike path and I just couldn't get down it fast enough which was weird and then the next morning Adam left for work and I just had like these weird fears that he was going to get into an accident and never come home and just these weird paranoias maybe it lasted about a week oh that time that I felt really claustrophobic in the car wash with Adam I've never felt claustrophobic before I've had MRIs I've had situations where I've been in enclosed spaces it never really bothered me before so obviously hormones but an issue, passed like within a week or two. Another thing that happened at the same exact time, 19, 19 and a half weeks, this kind of goes hand in hand with the anxiety because it's happened to me before with hormones, but I noticed that I would blush really easily. And it's so embarrassing because like my whole face, I could feel it getting hot and red in situations where you kind of want to play things off, but you can't. I don't know why that happens to me, but I feel it in the back of my hands first and then I feel my face get red and I get so embarrassed. So again, hormones, but it was weird. I think like that hormonal phase maybe lasted about a week or max two weeks. Also, I wrote this backwards. This says 18 weeks. I had some of the most amazing hair days that I've ever had in my life. I've heard all about the postpartum hair loss, which I'm petrified of, but I am enjoying the fullness. I'm assuming from the prenatal and from just your hair grows and sheds in different phases. And when you're pregnant, it doesn't shed as much because your body's holding on to everything. So I'm thoroughly enjoying those amazing hair days. Around 16 weeks, I had to stop running for distance. So short bursts, sprints, that kind of stuff, I'm okay. But longer distances, I had to stop because I had to go to the bathroom constantly. It was a two mile run at that point and I stopped five times to go to the bathroom and it was really uncomfortable and I remember the last stretch of probably a mile I had to go to the bathroom so bad but there was no place to stop at that point between the last place I went to the bathroom and home and I was just like running to get into the house so I'm sure it's hormones and now I can't run I can run again short distances but I can't run too much because my stomach is too heavy and baby pulls it down and when I wear a belly band that's okay, but it's okay for the belly and to hold it up and to support it. But then it does something to my lower back where I guess I'm not getting the flexibility I need and it triggers something where I feel like the bottom vertebrae is popping in and out and it's not popping back into place. And normally if that happens to me, I kind of have a weak lower back. I could just kind of shift my back a little bit and pop it back in, but I can't right now because I can't stretch right here and the baby's there. I spoke to another friend who was a runner. She said around that point too, she had to do it. So if you're a runner and you want to continue running, just make sure you use, if you're outside, a trail where you know there's bathrooms or you can go to an indoor track or the treadmill. I know it's not fun, but it's also not fun to urinate in your pants. So there's that. 
I still, by the way, will go to the bathroom in an hour long class about five times. My baby's really low. He's always been really low. I think he sits on my bladder. It's just an ongoing joke now. Like one time I was telling Adam, I'm afraid to continue going because I feel like they're going to think that I'm doing something shady in the bathroom. And he's like, you're pregnant. Like you have this huge belly. Obviously everybody knows. Between 19 and 20 weeks, I noticed that it was weird. For me, it was Sundays. I felt like I hit a wall. I could go all week long, but I guess exhaustion caught up with me and I would sleep most of the day on Sunday. I would get up, I'd go to the gym with Adam and then I would come home and I would sleep most of the day. Again, this might be related to my anemia. Pregnancy does cause exhaustion. You're just gonna have tired days, especially as you get further into your second trimester and then into your third. Of course, the first is also very exhausting, but I'm saying we're talking sec second trimester now, but it might've been my anemia. I'm not sure if it was me specific. But at 21 weeks is when I started to really gain weight. Actually, I had gained 10 pounds at my 21 week appointment. So I gained 10 pounds in a month. Like I had gained seven pounds and then my second appointment I gained one pound and in this appointment I had gained seven pounds. I'm not concerned about it. My doctor's like, you are all belly. It's just baby, it's swelling. There is some extra weight on my hips and my thighs and it's part of it. But I remember that's when specifically I felt really swollen. I had grown out of my first pair of maternity jeans because my legs were so swollen. Here's a funny thing though. I fit into them after that for a little while. I didn't lose weight. My legs, the swelling just went down a little bit and then it came back with a vengeance when it came, became hot in Las Vegas. But for you guys that maybe want to gauge like me or maybe gain like me, 20, 21 weeks is when I felt like I started to put on my pregnancy weight. 21 weeks was when the glorious... Charlie horses started. Heard about it before. I used to get Charlie horses in my calves when I was going through puberty and then they stopped. But I heard it's part of pregnancy because of the weight gain, because of the swelling, because of hormones. A lot of women suffer with leg cramps. My dad has suffered with them his whole life. He gets them miserably, not only in his calves, but up into his hamstrings. So maybe it's a genetic thing, I don't know. I noticed when I started taking iron, when I found out I was anemic, the nights that I would take the iron pills, because I wouldn't take them every night, were the nights that the cramps would be so severe, so I stopped taking them. My doctor said it's fine, as long as I'm eating meat and I'm feeling better. They're gonna test me again next I have my next appointment in two weeks, next appointment. And if I need to, she'll put me on a supplement or give me some sort of an iron infusion. But she said, because I'm feeling better and I added the meat back in, my red blood cells weren't so severe. It was my ferritin. So hopefully that'll help. But point is leg cramps were awful. I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would moan and I would curse. Sorry, baby. Adam would wake up, he would massage them out for me. It was just awful. And actually one night I barely slept, both of us barely slept because I was up almost all night because I was afraid to fall asleep because I was afraid of the cramping. It was that miserable. One night when it was happening, I got up and I started walking it out and that seemed to help or like stretching my leg, you know, when you put your foot up against the wall, that seemed to help. But at the end of the day, I asked my doctor, she's like, I am so sorry, you're doing everything that you can already do because I was eating a banana before bed. I take magnesium, I take calcium. I added dairy back into my diet, which just so you guys know, I probably will go back to being vegetarian, dairy-free after baby. But right now I added that stuff back in because he needs it. I'd rather get it from food than get it from supplements if possible. But I added all that stuff and she's like, then it's just part of it. So unfortunately, that and the swelling, which we'll get to in a minute. 20 weeks is when I definitively could not use my ab muscles anymore. In my nighttime routine video, just showed you guys me trying to do a sit up. It was hysterical. I will link it up in the card somewhere up there, but I cannot. And now actually, if I try, I will get what's called coning, where you can see a very substantial V. Here, it's when your abs are separating and it's dangerous. You can sever your abs and have to get surgery later in life. It's not gonna hurt the baby as far as he's gonna come out or anything like that, but you just don't wanna do it. So I stopped doing any ab work now, but 20 weeks, definitively no more sit-ups and I didn't lay on my back anymore. 21 weeks was interesting. I noticed that I stopped sweating really in the gym. So for weeks, like my whole first and second trimester, I thought I just wasn't getting good workouts in. I would be really sore the next day, but I would not sweat. And I'm like, oh, I guess I'm just not really pushing. And I am a sweaty Italian. <laughs> Italian, I would drip buckets 
during a warm up. So this was so out of the ordinary for me and it just, I don't know, it dawned on me one day like I don't sweat. Well, now that it's 90 degrees, it's a little bit different. I don't sweat as much as I used to sweat. Like I am not dripping buckets. You have to mop the floor of the gym after Adam works out. For me, not so much, but I used to be like that. So my sister said that she heard that's a boy mom thing. It's something with the boy hormones where your body runs colder and girl hormones is when you run hot. But starting, what was that? Starting last week, so probably 28, 29 weeks. Oh, I am hot all the time. I know it's hormones. I know it's gonna happen after baby two and have all of the night sweats and all that fun stuff. But up until then, second trimester, no sweating. 22 weeks, I noticed my areolas were the size of flying saucers. I was warned that this was gonna happen. I knew it was gonna happen. They did not darken. They're still their normal rosy pinkish color. So we'll see if that happens. I don't know if that happens when you're breastfeeding. I don't know if that happens at the very end, but I've got pink flying saucers. Naturally that happens so the babies can find your nipple and where to feed more easily. It's so cool what your body does during all of this. 23 weeks, I think baby went through a growth spurt because I was hungry all the time. I would snack all day long. At night, I would just think about food. I wouldn't get up during the night, but I mean in the evenings, if we were just sitting around, I would want sweet all of a sudden. Baby doesn't like sweet. I would eat a bite of it and I would, ugh, I didn't like it, but it was really hungry. And that lasted maybe a week or two and then it would come and go sporadically. It didn't last forever. When it hit, it hit and it hit hard. It's just your baby going through a growth spurt listen to your body and eat if you need it. I wrote this down. This is the, my extensive notes. See, it happened again at 23 and a half weeks. Starving, ate breakfast at eight. 10.30, I was nauseous and dry heaving. I was so hungry, it was so weird. Is the baby going through a growth spurt? <laughs> at 23 and a half weeks, I was getting a little bit short sometimes, short tempered sometimes. Like I woke up in the middle of the night, we had the windows open. It was a really beautiful breezy night and the window blinds kept hitting into the window sill frame or whatever it was because the wind was blowing them. First of all, it was startling me because of the anxiety, so I kept jerking out of my sleep. And second of all, I remember having a dream that I was beating those blinds against the wall. I was so mad at them. I got up and I moved them and I was opening and closing them. And finally I thought, mm, shut the window. A couple of times that I had moods, but really, I mean, that's not really that bad considering. 24 weeks, I had zero energy. And that's when I found out that my ferritin levels, my iron levels were really low. So that explained it. And that's when I added meat back in. So that's more of a personal thing, I think. But 27, 28 weeks is when people say that they hit their pregnancy wall and they get really exhausted all the time. So that's normal. My extreme exhaustion that early during the second trimester, that early, I mean, that, yeah, that early, I guess, was probably more due to my iron. At 24 weeks, I started to really feel pregnant. It was hard to bend down. Things were just aching. I had round ligament pain, not terribly, but it was there. I was tired, I was hungry, I was bloated. Just that traditional pregnancy feeling. 24 weeks, I also noticed that I was really veiny. The veins in my chest and my arms were pronounced and noticeable, and that's just because you have more blood flow in your body, but I had never noticed it before that. 25 weeks is when my fingers and my ankles and my, even for me, my calves and my knees and my feet, but predominantly my ankles and my feet, my calves and my fingers started swelling. That's also when it hit 90 degrees here. I did read on one of the pregnancy updates that this time is around when your body does start to swell just from the hormones, from the extra weight, from the difference of the blood flow in your body. Yesterday, my fingers swelled up so bad while we were hiking, so I was exercising. My fingers sometimes swell anyway, non-pregnant when I work out, so I knew the feeling and I knew it would go away, but they were such little Vienna sausages. I should have took a picture, I just didn't think to. I couldn't bend them past here. And I was joking with Adam, I'm like, is this what attracted you to me? My Vienna sausages? My doctor said it's part of it. She suggested compression socks which I did wear a couple times. On the days that I wore them, I was getting the terrible cramps at night, kind of like in my lower back when I wear the band. They're not letting your muscles work the same way that they're used to working, I guess. So I stopped wearing those. She also told me the pool can help. The cool water, and she's like, it's exercise anyway. So my pool just opened up this weekend. We have not had a chance to go yet, but I'll probably be spending a lot of time in the pool over the next couple of weeks and months. And it's just part of it, not complaining. 
it is what it is. 27 weeks is when I felt like I hit my pregnancy wall. There were times where I felt awful. My belly really got big at 27 weeks. I feel really good right now. It's just the normal stuff that we'll talk about that comes with the third trimester. I went to the doctor today with this notebook because they told me this is when things start to get fun and they throw a lot of information at you. Third trimester update is gonna be real. I'm excited for it. We're down to at max, we have 10 weeks left at this point, yay. Let's do a bump update. So here is the big man, not even a little man anymore. Here's the big guy. Everything looks good, we're measuring good, we feel good. Even though there's times where I hit that wall, there are minor things, and I'm saying minor because I'm very blessed to be high risk and to not experience really bad pregnancy symptoms. I can still work out, I can work out hard. I can still hike, I'm fine, I am mobile. I mean, there's a lot of people at my age or younger. I was just talking to this girl at the gym where her 20 year old friend was on bed rest for three months. People have bleeding, people have pain the whole time, spotting, baby wants to come early. Some people have to go in and get stitched up so the baby doesn't come out early. I am so beyond blessed that this little man has been doing his mom a favor. Pregnancy isn't the most fun experience of life. There are things that are going to change in your body. There are things that are going to hurt. There's normal aches and pains. You're going to be tired. You are growing a human girlfriend. Yes, it's long. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it's tedious. Yes, there are mood swings and cravings and everything else, but you got this. Second trimester was the best part of this. I loved a lot of it. So enjoy it while you can. The spicy stuff is coming next trimester. Oh, and for you guys that are wondering, I could still do coloring with Adam. It still feels really good. I mean, I'm fine with it. The belly doesn't get in the way as long as you use certain crayons in your box. That's not a problem at all. If you're interested in watching the first half of my second trimester video, did I say semester a lot? I always confuse those two. But the first half of my second trimester update video and all the things that were going on then, just click the video that pops up on the screen or I'll try to put it in the description box below. You could always just scroll back on the channel and search it. If you're not already subscribed, we would love to have you join the family. Click the circle that pops up on the screen or the red box below. Give this video a thumbs up. It just helps me out so much in YouTube. I love you guys so very much and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.